In this video, we will cover the pre-flight inspection of the Cessna 150M. The pre-flight planning is covered in a separate presentation. The pre-flight inspection begins as you approach your aircraft. Pilots should look for obvious signs of trouble, including such things as airframe damage, fluid leaks, and flat tires. Once you arrive at the aircraft, the company-authorized pre-flight checklist should be used to guide you through the process of ensuring your aircraft is safe for flight. The inspection begins with a check of the cockpit and then proceeds in a counterclockwise direction around the aircraft. The cockpit check begins by ensuring the satellite tracking device is on and the tracking has been activated. Up to 10 minutes may be required for the initial data to be transmitted, so it is important to start the process as early as possible prior to your departure. Details on the use of the tracking device will be provided during your checkout. A quick reference card is also included with the aircraft checklists. Next, you'll want to verify that all required documentation is on board the aircraft. This includes the airworthiness certificate, registration, and flight manual or POH with the current weight and balance. Each aircraft has two binders in the dispatch kit. The first is the aircraft supplements manual that contains all required operating information for installed equipment. The second binder contains the aircraft inspection summary, maintenance discrepancies log, company operations manual, and other related company documents. It is critical that pilots routinely check the aircraft inspection summary record to be certain that no required inspections are overflown during the rental period. That is the pilot's responsibility. Once the documentation check is complete, remove the control lock and any external covers, such as cowl plugs and pitot tube cover. Also, verify that the rudder gust lock is removed. After ensuring the ignition switch is off and the key is removed, turn the battery master switch on. Be sure to leave the alternator side of the split master switch off. Listen for the sound of the turn coordinator gyro spooling up. Note the fuel quantity indicated on the left and right gauges. Next, verify that the high voltage annunciator light on the far right side of the instrument panel is illuminated, indicating the alternator is offline and the warning light is working. The next step is to test all exterior lighting on the aircraft. All Time Build USA aircraft will have standard navigation lights, a tail beacon, and a landing light. Some aircraft will have optional wingtip strobe lights installed. Turn on all exterior light switches and walk around the aircraft to verify that all lighting is operational. When complete, shut all lights off except the navigation lights, which are to remain on at all times. Also, ensure that all other electrical equipment and avionics are off. The wing flap should be fully extended to allow for inspection. As you extend the flaps, listen for any unusual noises and check for normal movement. Check the mechanical flap indicator on the left front door post for proper indications. Once the flaps are fully extended, turn the battery master off. Verify that the fuel selector located on the floor between the pilot seats is set to the on position. The selector handle should be in the horizontal position parallel to the floor. This concludes the cockpit pre-flight inspection. The exterior portion of the pre-flight begins with the aft fuselage and empennage. The left side of the fuselage, including the upper and lower section, should be checked for any damage such as dents and wrinkling of the skin. Visually verify that all antennas are intact. This is also a good vantage point to assess the entire upper wing surface for obvious defects. Moving aft toward the tail, visually inspect the vertical stabilizer and upper and lower skin of the horizontal stabilizer. Verify that the rudder gust lock has been removed. Next, check that the elevator movement is smooth by gently moving the control surface through its full range of travel. Special attention should be paid to the elevator cable and connecting hardware as shown here, both upper and lower side. The elevator trim tab is attached to the trailing edge of the right elevator. Care should be taken not to hold the elevator by the tab when moving the elevator. The trim tab hinge should be inspected along with the connecting rod located underneath the tab. The rudder should be checked for freedom of movement. Be certain to avoid moving the rudder with the trim tab. The rudder is attached to the vertical stabilizer by three upper hinges and a lower control horn, each of which should be carefully inspected. 
Visually inspect the rudder control cables and hardware for security. For aircraft e equipped with VOR receivers, the navigation antenna is typically mounted at the top of the vertical stabilizer as shown here. To complete the empennage preflight, undo the tail tie down and check the right side of the fuselage as you did with the left. The preflight next continues to the right wing and main landing gear. Begin by draining the right hand fuel tank sump and inspect the sample for any water or contamination. Also verify the correct fuel grade, 100 low lead, by noting the blue color tint. It is helpful to hold the sample against a white background to better identify the coloration of the sample. Dispose of the fuel sample in accordance with regulations. Next, examine the right main landing gear assembly beginning with the tire. Check for proper inflation and any signs of excessive wear such as flat spots. Check that the wheel hub hardware is in place and that the cotter pin shown here is installed. On the inboard side, look for any signs of hydraulic fluid leaks around the brake lines and caliber assemblies. Check the condition of the brake disc and that the brake pads are not worn. Remove the wheel chalk if installed. The Cessna 150 features single slot type flaps that are electrically driven. Inspect the flap skins both top and bottom for damage. Carefully check each flap track assembly for cracks or excessive wear. Verify that the tracks and the rollers are clear of debris. Finally, check the flap pushrod for security. A slight amount of rotational play in the pushrod is normal. The flaps themselves should have a very slight amount of fore aft play when extended. Moving outboard along the trailing edge, inspect the upper and lower aileron skin and check for proper movement and smooth travel. Ensure the yoke moves in the correct direction with the movement of the aileron. Carefully inspect each of the hinges, looking closely at the hinge attach hardware and the hinge pin. Check the aileron pushrod and attachment hardware. As with the flaps, some rotational play in the pushrod should be noted. At the outboard end of the aileron near the wingtip, check that the counterweights are securely installed. To prevent injury, always hold the aileron up by one hand while using the other hand to inspect. A sudden gust of wind could move the aileron down rapidly, injuring your hand or fingers. Also, when moving a control surface, it is advisable to hold a surface by a section that is internally supported, as evidenced by a rivet line. As you work your way to the end of the wing, inspect the wingtip and lights. This is also a good time to look down the length of the entire wing to ensure the skin is smooth with no signs of wrinkling that would indicate the airframe may have been overstressed. Also, check the leading edge of the wing for damage. After the wing tie down is removed, check the fuel quantity using the calibrated fuel dipstick. Sticking the fuel tank is the only reliable way to measure fuel quantity. Never trust the fuel gauges. It is important that the aircraft be level to get an accurate reading on the dipstick. To measure the fuel quantity, remove the fuel cap by twisting counterclockwise. Insert the dipstick into the tank, being sure to orient it properly so the fuel quantity in gallons can be read. Gently lower the dipstick into the tank while holding it vertical, allowing it to touch the bottom of the tank. Wait a few seconds for the float to stabilize and indicate the fuel in the tank. When removing the stick, bring it up to the top of the tank and allow the fuel in the dipstick to drain back into the tank to avoid spills. Once the fuel cap is resecured, visually check any antennas installed on the top of the aircraft. Look along the top of both wings to check for any wrinkling of the skin that would indicate the airframe may have been overstressed. This concludes the right wing inspection. The inspection of the nose section begins with a check of the engine oil quantity. Access to the rear of the engine compartment is through a hinge door located on the right side of the cowling. The oil dipstick and fuel strainer drain handle are located within this area. To check the oil, loosen the dipstick and slowly lift it out. Be certain to have a rag or paper towel underneath the filler neck to catch residual oil that will drip as the dipstick is removed. If oil drips inside the engine compartment, clean it up immediately with a rag. With the dipstick removed, clean it off with a paper towel or rag and reinsert into the filler neck. Remove it a second time to read the oil quantity. Five quarts is a typical acceptable oil level. Filling the oil level to the maximum capacity of six quarts will usually cause oil to vent through the breather tube once the engine heats up. If it becomes necessary to add oil, be certain to use only the spare oil supplied by the company in the aircraft. 
If no extra oil is available, check the dispatch ticket for the proper type of oil to use. Always use a funnel when adding oil and immediately clean up any spills in the engine compartment. An oil service kit is included in the rear baggage area that contains spare oil, rags, and a funnel. Reinsert the dipstick and check to be sure it is secure. Next, drain the fuel strainer by pulling up on the spring-loaded handle. Be prepared to catch the fuel sample that will exit through a small tube on the bottom of the cowl. Allow the handle to spring back to the closed position. Check the sample carefully for any contamination and dispose of properly. Some Cessna 150s are equipped with an optional belly fuel drain located beneath the cabin floor. These aircraft will have a placard informing the pilot of the additional fuel drain. As with the fuel tank drains, collect a sample and inspect for contamination. As you move to the front of the airplane, examine the carburetor induction air inlet for any signs of damage or blockage. Check that the left and right air inlets are clear and in good condition. Inspect the propeller spinner, paying careful attention to the screws to secure it. Check both propeller blades for damage or nicks. The nose wheel assembly and attach hardware should be carefully inspected, including the steering rods, shimmy damper, torque link, and axle. The strut should show about 3 to 4 inches of extension and be free of leaks and dirt. The nose wheel tire should be assessed for proper inflation and overall condition. Remove the nose wheel chalk if installed. While underneath the cowl, check the two exhaust pipes for condition and security, being careful not to touch them if they're hot. Check under the cowl and belly for any signs of excessive oil streaking. The last item to check on the nose is the static port, which is located on the left side of the fuselage, just forward of the pilot's door. Be certain it is free of obstruction by visually inspecting. The final portion of the pre-flight inspection covers the left wing. The inspection is virtually identical to the right wing and should be performed in the same manner as previously discussed here. However, there are three notable additions. The first item is the pitot tube. Check to ensure the cover is removed and that the opening is clear of obstruction. Second, check the fuel tank vent line and drain hole is unobstructed. Finally, check the stall warning opening in the leading edge for any stoppage. When the left wing has been fully inspected, the pre-flight inspection is complete. It is strongly advised to conduct a quick reverse 360 visual check of the airplane to verify the following. Are all chocks and tie-downs removed? Have all covers been removed? Are all exterior control locks removed? Are all doors closed and secured, including the engine access door? Be certain to check that the passenger side seat belt is not caught in the door. Are the fuel caps secure? Are the fuel strainer and fuel dipstick stored back in the aircraft? With the reverse 360 check done, the pre-flight is complete. This has been a presentation of Time Build USA. Time Build USA offers exceptionally clean late model Cessna 150 aircraft to pilots for extended rental periods. Now you can have access to your own aircraft for days or weeks at a time. Visit us online at timebuildusa.com.